Right, so one job that always gives me anxiety is testing to see what component blows a boiler's fuse. I don't know why, I know it's gonna pop, I know roughly when it's gonna pop, but it's just not knowing exactly when always makes me jump out of my skin as you're clearly about to see now. Yeah, <laughs> it always gets me. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is gonna be another episode of Day in the Life of a Gas Engineer. The first job is going to be taking a look at what is blowing this boiler's fuse. So the boiler we're working on is a main Eco Elite and the customer said the boiler is completely dead, there's no power, it's just not turning on. So first thing I tried to do when I got there is turn it on, it was dead, so I tried checking the fuses inside the boiler, they had blown, no continuity. So I thought right, let me put two new fuses in, see what happens, it blew straight away, so something's blowing the fuses. So what I'm gonna do from here is just disconnect all the components from the PCB. If the boiler then turns on and doesn't blow, then there's a component that's blowing the PCB. If it still blows while everything's disconnected, then it's probably a faulty PCB. So one thing you probably noticed by now as well is all the rat droppings. So probably what's happened is rats either chewed something or just used the boiler as a bathroom and um, yeah, that's probably why something has blown. So I'm only keeping one connection in, that's that blue and brown cable right there, that's the power to the PCB, and I'm gonna turn it on. So boiler turns on, nothing's blowing, PCB's all good. And now one by one, I'm slowly gonna start putting these connectors back in and roughly seeing what blows. So I've put that one in the bottom right, turn it on, nothing seems to be blowing. So, so far, we're all good. Done this second one now, turn it on, see if anything blows. That one is also working fine. Next one, we've done that top right one, turn it on again. Nothing's blowing, so on to the next. Again, all good, nothing's blowing. So at this point, pretty much everything's plugged in apart from one last thing. And for some reason, it always is the last thing you test. Similar to when landlords give you a key to a HMO and you're testing 10 different keys to get in one room and it's always the last key that you try. So we're gonna plug in this last thing and you'll see it blows straight away. And there it is, it's the timer, timer's faulty. So if I zoom in, you can see all of the drop-ins, you can see it's been chewing away at the boiler. So um, it's probably done something to the boiler and messed it up. So yeah, I'm gonna order a new timer for them and get that changed over. In the meantime, I'm gonna leave it disconnected so they can use the hot water. This job's done for now, on to the next. So this job, Hulk was here before me because when tightening that compression, they've twisted the whole copper pipe, which I really do not understand how you manage to do something like that. So of course, there'd be no water flowing through that properly. So gonna get that sorted. So I've had to cut the wall to get more access to the pipe. I tried putting a straight connection, it doesn't really line up. So we're gonna have to bend a little bit of pipe and that should be okay. So that's that one sorted now. Ignore the soda balls. I was more trying to focus on not burning the house down because there was insulation there, but that should be that one squid. So the next job is a leaking valent. The customer says as soon as he puts pressure in it, it all gushes out straight away. So let's see what's happening. So 
So I'm just trying to see where the water's coming from, seeing if I can see any drips at all. Can't really see anything. So gonna add more pressure into the boiler and see if anything happens then. Still not really seeing anything. And then I look up because it looks like most of the water's coming from the right and it is just AAV. And I've never seen an AAV like this before. It looks like the top part of it has split into two, which is really strange. So in terms of taking it out, really simple, just a flathead screwdriver, ping the clip towards you, and that's it, it should come out. I feel like I use this screwdriver for literally 99% of my jobs. So this is a new one, got it all greased up, so hopefully it should just slip right in. So before I get the boiler back up and running, just quickly gonna charge the expansion vessel because it's usually empty. This one wasn't surprisingly, it had about 0.4 bar in it. So I'm just gonna top it up to 0.8. So the repair's all done, just gonna pop some pressure in the boiler, make sure there's no other leaks at all, do my safety checks and that should be this job completely done. So for this next job we have a gas hob. So in terms of this one, I think it's just a bit old. The ignition is not working properly, so they want to get it changed over. So you can see they've used a um, cooker hose, which it's a bit of a debate on this. Some companies say you can use a cooker hose on their hobs, I think it's always best to just hard pipe it anyway. So pop the drawer out and hopefully now can get access to these pipes. So the challenge for this job is not to eat away at their covered any more than someone has already. So gonna try to do all pipe work behind the cupboard, not to make any more holes. That is a challenge for this job. First things first, open the cupboard, test the gas, make sure it's all good before I touch anything. Now, left my screwdriver all the way in the kitchen, could not be bothered to get it, but I always keep this little cool tool on my keys, which is always attached to my trousers. So it's gonna slip that on, crack it, and then can get my U-gauge on it. Silicone's all cut out, no clamps underneath, so this should just lift up now. So in terms of the wiring, what I think they've done is they've kept the wire connected to the fuse spur from the old, old hob, the hob before this. And because they couldn't be bothered to get into that, which I do not blame them, that looks disgusting. Um, they just cut the cables and joined it together. However, fortunately for me, I will be doing it properly, otherwise it will bug me. So I'm gonna disconnect the cables from here and put the brand new cable back into here. Live out. Neutral's out, now just the earth. So that's everything disconnected now. For some reason, this gas hose is just 
it's stuck. So just have to figure out why it's stuck and unhook it from wherever it's hooked on. Right, that's that out. I'm gonna dash it in the back of the van. Tried slotting in the new one, but it just doesn't fit slightly out. So gonna get my multi tool adjust the works up a little bit and get that fitting in. So what I did is I got a pen and it's gonna be hard to see because it's a black pen, but I just drew a straight line of where it was overlapping by and that's where I'm gonna cut. That's it, all cut, just need to pop it out and hob should fit perfect after this. Got some gas PCFE on, this is what it looks like before it's tightened and that is what it looks like after it's tightened. So the hob slid in perfect but it made it really hard to tighten the nut on that hob connection so it's going to adjust this little section here, pop it out and should have enough space to tighten the hob connection if I need to. That's it, hobs in, fits perfect. And if you look underneath now, you see what I was talking about. Got enough space to tie a knife if I need to. So next I just need to cut out this pipe with the bayonet fitting on it. Got a rough piece of pipe, got my gas elbow on it, and gonna slot it in, see how it roughly lines up. So my plan was to put a uh, elbow there to elbow into the hob but you can see it's too tight it's not going to work so what i think is best is just to twist that hob connector left a little bit and it should just go like that so that's all in nothing's tightened yet you can see i'm going to have to press that elbow first before i put it in because there's going to be no access so pressing it now then going to put it in and tighten the compressions I did have to cut that back part a little bit more down just so I can tighten the nuts on the isolation valve. But that's it, all cut and done. Let's get everything tight. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm super strong or that's just a really weak fitting, but when I was tightening it, it did end up cracking. I'm gonna say it's because I'm super strong, give myself an ego boost, um, but really, it probably is just a weak fitting. So get the joys of taking it out, put another one in, redoing it, and now sorted it, all good. Gas is all good, just need to sort out this wiring now. Wiring's all sorted, just need to see if I've got two screws to put that plate back on. But that's it, take this plastic off, silicone the hob, get in there, slowly get in there.
most of the plastic's off, just need to loosen these screws, dig out the little pieces of plastic in them, and that's it. That's it, clamped one underneath, done all my safety checks. This one is all good to go. So this next repair is in a cupboard, which is pretty cool. The customer actually made them himself. So push it and then you gain access, but it looks nice because you can't even really tell there's a cupboard there. But this one leaking again, and he said he opened up the boiler and it's coming from the pipe on the left. And I'll get him to describe it to me. And it is one of them old flow pipes on the Valent, the one with the rubber on it. So I came prepared with a new flow pipe and we're gonna get that changed over. But it seems like the guys had an issue with the return rubber pipe before because that's been changed to the copper version, but for some reason they left the flow. No idea why it's holding to do that. It would make sense to do both in one hit. But yeah, I'm gonna be changing over the flow. So first thing, get my bucket underneath and drain it down. And yes, I'm in a bathtub, which is a little bit annoying because I kept slipping everywhere. So here, got the new pipe, just gonna put the seals on, grease it up and get it ready to go. So taking out that flow pipe, super simple. Once the clip is out, it literally just pushes left. Then you have a clip at the top, just under the heat exchanger, pull that towards you, and then the pipe will just wiggle down. Right, so just before I put that new pipe in, I just wanna quickly speak on something that I've really struggled with. Um, I think it was last Christmas type of time. So, as you can see in the picture I showed, there's two different types of flow pipes you can get. And I did not know this before. I thought all of those flow pipes were the same. So last Christmas, I was doing the same job, changing over the flow and return, and that flow pipe would not go in. I was struggling for about a solid half an hour, and I'm going crazy thinking, I've done this so many times before, why can't I get this in? Called Valent, and yeah, it turns out you can get two versions. The bend on it is just a little bit different, but it makes all the difference. So just make sure you've got the right flow pipe for that boiler, otherwise you will be struggling. So for this next job, we've been called out to uh, main eco elite and the pressure is low. So they can't figure out why the pressure keeps going low. They're topping up every day. So the first thing I'm looking at is underneath, is there any leaks? Probably not because I think they would have known if they had leaks from there every day. So either gonna be a leak from the PRV or somewhere on the system. So first thing I do is I go outside, stick my finger in the PRV pipe. Is it wet? Yes. So PRV is leaking. So take the front case off and the PRV is right there. First thing I'm going to do is attach my hose and drain down the boiler. Gonna isolate the flow and return because it's not the highest point, so we're not gonna drain the whole system. And barely anything comes out because the boiler's already low on pressure. So the next thing I need to do is take out the little screw that holds the PRV in, and I love this weir allen key for this because you don't have to put it in at a straight angle and if they do have the internal filling loop on the boiler you can't put an allen key at a straight angle it's a little bit hard so this allen key you can do it at any angle and you can still undo it which is pretty cool so now that screws out this prv should literally just pull forward I've got some tissue underneath catching a little bit of dribble and just going to put the new prv in now And that's it, PRV, all done. 
now i'm just going to charge the expansion vessel because it's probably going to be empty as it always is but let's take a look and it's empty so depending on the pump you have it might not fit it might be a little bit too big so you can get these cool little extension tools as well an idea is instead of you having to force it on top of the vessel you can just connect your pump to there but that's it vessels will charge boilers completely empty now just gonna take the pump off put some ldf to make sure it's not bypassing and put the cap on So boilers are done, just got to do my safety checks, that should be that sorted, but the job is not finished. The customer did the famous, oh while you're here, can you quickly take a look at this? And um, the tap is making the horrible noise it does when a valve is bypassing. So they already had a tap there, so I think it was their plan to get me to change the tap as well. So I'm going to quickly record myself changing this tap, and the reason I'm recording it is I'm going to try to use a cool little trick that I see on TikTok that I don't believe but we'll see if it does work. So because there's no isolation valves on the pipes, we're gonna turn the main water off. And then I got my special sockets to fit on large thread. So as you can see here, my normal back of arms wouldn't fit. This thread is quite long. So that'll be perfect. I'm gonna undo that nut, get the tap out. So this is the trick I see on TikTok. Apparently, you can put this through the hole already assembled. And what you've got to do is, I'm probably going to make it look really difficult because I'm using one hand. But the idea behind it is you first put one side in and you simply just rotate it and it just pops through. Um, again, I'm making it look horrible because I'm doing it with one hand. But I couldn't believe it worked. It's only a little hack, but it saves a little bit of time. You know, sometimes you're fiddling underneath the sink trying to get the nut on, you can't see, it's horrible. It just saves you maybe an extra minute, but it's pretty cool. So I threw on two isolation valves and now I'm gonna turn the water back on. And that's it. I'm done out of this house now. There's nothing else to do. So this job is all done. But that's it. That is it for this episode. If there's anything you would have done differently, again, put in the comments. Any thoughts, again, put in the comments. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.